my trusty co-host, Trisha Hirschberger, sort of sitting in this general vicinity right here. But today is the first day of San Diego Comic-Con, so that's where she is. Probably fighting crime in really awesome Wonder Woman cosplay. I I'm sure we'll get the lowdown uh, on what she's doing down there. Have fun, Trisha, if you happen to catch this. Uh, we'll see you back here next week. And I'm gonna expect you to bring lots and lots of swag with you uh, since I wasn't able to make it down this year. I'm flying solo today, but as always, Newegg Now is here, ready to save you some cash. We're gonna be talking about tech. If it's Thursday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, you know where to be, newegg.com slash Newegg Now for all the deals. And you can, wa you can watch along there or on Newegg's YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. So on Newegg Now, we feature deals on great tech that go live at the start of the show and will be active until the end of the day or while supplies last. So if you see something you like, don't wait around too long. I'm speaking slowly just to emphasize this point because I have personally missed out on some really great deals because they will go fast. All right, so uh, today, what we have up, if you check out that newegg.com slash newegnow deals page right now, you'll see a lot of today's deals come with Newegg gift cards you can use on future purchases like the Zotac 1070 Ti graphics card. Normally $539, you can get it with the promo code on the Newegg Now page for just $479. Plus, you'll get a $20 gift card to use later. And that's just the start of the great deals we have for you today. I'll be highlighting a few more later on in the show. But first, it's time to talk about the wonderful overlap between the worlds of DIY PCs and custom cars, something that I have been super excited to share with you folks all week since I saw the script that all of our Newegg Ninjas put together. We have some real experts in the studio, studio today to help us have that conversation. Let's get a look at what they're all about with this video. Let's throw it at this intro. Oh, buddy. Did you see that thing? Welcome to Garage Garage! Yo, back up into this and do a burnout. Get a little fire burnout. Today, <laughs> today we hurt ourselves on drip course. Damn, that is loud. Welcome back. PC building and automobile customization are both huge industries. And th though there's some connection between the two different worlds, there are also a lot of PC builders who don't know much about cars or car enthusiasts who have never built their own PC. Joining me today to talk about what these two DIY hobbies have in common, we have Hurt and Brian from Hoonigan. Welcome, guys. Hoonigan's in the house. What's going on? Uh, I'm so excited to have you guys I'm in the studio to be today. Here. This, this facility is, is awesome. Oh, thanks. You yeah, guys well, are nice and pretty. Together. A nice little, uh, yeah. nice little uh, place for, for meetups and uh, for shooting some I know video. what professionals actually use. Yeah. Well, this, <laughs> this is weird. Like, oh, I mean, come on. Your garage is, is pretty well put together, though. It's all show, no go. This is, <laughs> this is, this is pretty much the creme de la creme. All right. So, so for, for folks in our audience who maybe are a little bit more on the tech side, uh, might not be familiar with your work, what is a Hoonigan? What would, how would you define the term Hoonigan? Easiest way to define a Hoonigan is basically someone who uh, likes to have fun in cars. That's, okay. that's the easiest, simple way. Uh, whether you like drifting, drag racing, road racing, or just modifying your car to make it look cool, you, all of that defines you. Now, as, I, I got into a conversation with a friend of mine. Hoon it comes from, that's an Australian term. Yep, yep. It's an Australian word. So basically, the founders of Hoonigan, mm -hmm. Ken and Brian, they were trying to shoot a stunt in Australia, uh, came up with the lingo from them. 
And then they're like, oh, that's a cool word. I wonder if we can make that into boom, 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 boom. Hoonigan personified it, turned it into this. Five years, six or seven years later, <laughs> we're here. So, Right, yeah. and it's been a good run for you guys. So um, what, do, what do each of you do with the Hoonigan team? Like, uh, So I mostly help out with a lot of editorial, but one of the things I've always loved is working on PCs and gaming. So like you were talking yeah. about, one of my things is, I know PCs really well. I see Hurt and the other guys working on cars. I'm like, that looks like a lot of fun, but that looks scary as hell. So <laughs> I'm going to stick with my computers and, you know, do the thing of can it run crisis. Yeah, he, nice. sa he saves our lives when it comes to computers in the office for sure. And as for myself, I, uh, I actually started as the social media person at Hoonigan way back um, mm -hmm. five or six years ago. Uh, but at the same time, I was also shooting video, editing video. Well, we, we were talking thing, before so. the show started. I mean, it wasn't like like you were completely detached from the world of PCs and stuff before no. you started working on cars. Yeah, I mean, before cars, computers were my thing. I love computers. I love video games. I always wanted to pursue like some kind of computer programming or or something of that genre. Um, but then I got my first car and. There's no looking back after that. Just, <laughs> my life is ruined. <laughs> or made awesome. Hey, it's a career now. Yeah, tomato, tomato. Right. <laughs> Again, it's like when you follow no. your passion and you're like, oh, well, that's both good and bad. <laughs> no, I love it. I love, I love where Cars has brought me. I never would have dreamed to, to live the life that I'm living because of Cars. Because I've literally dedicated my life to cars and my passion of drifting, and it's paid back. So I'm, right I'm, I'm so, getting a little inspirational yeah, on yeah. the show too. <laughs> Aspirational. <laughs> so, so I, I would imagine, especially for for guys around our age, um, that there would be a little Venn diagram overlap between those two cultures and stuff. For for the rest of the the Hoonigan team, like, are you guys gamers? Do you guys do you guys compete there just as hard as you compete when it comes to doing car work? Or yeah. Yeah, when so when our our current simulator that no longer works when it was working, um, you know I, I'm probably the heaviest gamer in the office, but okay. but I talk enough crap to everyone that they want to come for me. So we well, would, I mean you were the fastest Hoonigan for a I, while yes, too. Yes, so. yes, I was. I thank you for noticing. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, you hear yes. that, Teague? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Teague and Vinny, if you're watching this, uh, you're slow. video of him winning a foot race. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I was faster there, too. I forgot about that. <laughs> I, 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 thought, I was talking simulator. But, Undefeated. Yeah, no, the simulator, it's just such a fun challenge because, you know, we all have our own disciplines, and the simulator allows you to do all of them in one. Really? Um, yeah, you can go drifting, you can go road racing, you can try, you know, you can do whatever you want, and it actually translates into making you a better driver in a real car, too. That's right. how. So you guys did find that there was a correlation oh, between... Oh, yeah, 100%. Simulator training is real deal. Like, right on. Yeah, it's, it's kind of wild. So just to put it in perspective for you, I, Vinny, um, he's not a drifter. He's a road racer. So okay. he's, he's comfortable behind the wheel, but I taught him how to drift on the simulator, and then we went to, uh, we went to this track in Apple Valley about two hours mm -hmm. away, and we put them in these little drift vehicles, drifting, no Picked problem. It right up. No problem. That's really yeah. exciting. So, so it's because, direct. You know, I, I mean, right now, I'm, I've been playing a lot of mobile games, and you're like, this is not yeah, drifting. That, that's not going to cut it for you. Like Counter-steer. So. Counter-steer. <laughs> exactly. Believe it or not, little things like that will help you understand it better. Right. So, so it'll slightly help you. But getting behind the, the yeah, getting behind the wheel of a simulator and playing some games is so you're gonna have to come to the shop and try it out. I, sometime. I, I accept yeah. your invitation. Yeah, um, right. Part of the reason why you're here today is because you know, we've been working together, working with Newegg on a PC building project, and uh, we've already been teasing this with yeah. the old simulator that yeah, doesn't yeah. work anymore. I, I think we could probably talk more about that now. Um, we we have some video if uh, if we can throw to that, we'll have it up while we just talk about it right here. But um, this this is simulator 2.0 is this yeah the, the so new refresh? so we basically got the idea to build two simulators mm -hmm. um because you know we do a lot of head-to-head -head racing we're always competing with each other but it's hard we had to switch seats so we figured <laughs> all right let's build two simulators let's build roll cages around them let's get awesome d-box uh, actuator things and make them feel like real cars um Meet up with you guys, build these bad daddies right here. Right, right. The engines, stuff them <laughs> in the simulators, and do some head to head racing. Like, we're going all the way in on these. We're taking them to RTX, which is one of the biggest 
um, uh, conventions for computers and gaming and stuff nice. like that in Austin, Texas, I think August 5th or something like that. Very cool. Um, but these simulators are going to be nuts. I, I've seen pictures. We'll probably tease a little bit of what you, you'll, you'll see. Um, there's going to be a four-part series about building these simulators. So mm -hmm. there will be four episodes coming soon on Hoonigan's YouTube channel, Instagram, uh, hoonigan.com, any of those places. But uh, so long story short, simulator build, put it together, get some bad data computers from Newegg, <laughs> and take them to Texas and try not to break them. But that doesn't look like it's going to break. So I, well, I, I think so. We can talk about some of the internals too, because like uh, we I, we were looking at part of the, some of the parts list, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of interesting. They went with air cooling instead of water cooling, and then I I didn't realize the activity that these things were going to be facing. So uh, when we were working together on this, you know, the New Egg Ninjas, and you guys were putting these together. Um, let's start off with some of the parts here uh, for the New Egg audience. Mm -hmm. We've got a lot of stuff from Be Quiet. Yeah. Um, I mean, this computer's running right now, and you can't hear it. Oh yeah. It's you can't hear. That's, it. that's normally something you <laughs> with like a water cool build. It's yeah. like, oh, well, I did these parts because I wanted to run really cool and really quiet. But mm -hmm. then also, if you look at ginormous fans, yeah. giant blocks and stuff like that, you can you can kind of get there too. But there there was that idea of of purposely building it that way because water pumps and reservoirs you probably wouldn't want. Mm. As cool as it looks, because I've seen some of your rigs over there, that's insane. I would right. love that, you know, <laughs> uh, but. These simulators are going to be moving around, especially yeah. if we're taking them to uh, Texas all the way from Long Beach, California, and things mm -hmm. like that. So make it nice, simple, mobile. Um, and so not only, you know, the, these things are going to be on wheels, it's a full, it looks like a car. It looks yeah. like a mini car. So we're going to actually have some casters so we can lift them up, put them on wheels, and roll them to whatever part nice. of the building we want to. So if we want to go play video games outside with this thing, you know, we'll take it outside. After summer, summer is not yeah, good. No, yeah, no, no, no summer. <laughs> so, so t tell me, uh, just kind of walk me through. What, what did we decide? Uh, what did we uh, finalize on for for putting the, the PC together for you? Well, it's always nice when somebody from work says, uh, "Newegg's going to help us build a computer and uh, make what you want." And I'm like, "I can do this. I can do this. I can work he, with this." He, he basically was like, "Move along, boys." Uh, no, 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 no. I, I got it. this. I got this. Uh, so, as you can see, very simply, uh, yeah. We're doing the thing that we all want to do is run an SLI GeForce GTX 1080 Ti's. Uh, right. I know it's been a pain in the ass to get these just because everybody's using them to mine cryptocurrency, which I may do at the office. <laughs> I need to afford my car parts somehow. I just figured out Brian's secret. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> suddenly there's a secondary income coming yeah, in. Let, let me in on this, man. Let yeah, me dude, in on this. I got you, I got you. Uh, so, well, one of the things that we wanted to do was to build a really badass simulator, and we wanted to be pushing a lot of pixels. So right. uh, our previous simulator, we were running three 1080p displays, but now we're trying to run three 4K displays. Right. And that's a lot more pixels, and so we need as much, you know, horsepower as we can out of the machine. So, this is so um, <laughs> and obviously, if we're running, you know, dual TTXs, we need to have an appropriate power supply. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to be running this around the office or running it, you know, to Texas or to places that are really hot, we need to keep it cool. Right. And the other key thing is, uh, if you've seen us use any stuff at the office, we tend to thrash things, and so it has to be durable. I'm so, this way. you know. <laughs> We could try to go for like pure overclocking, go for maximum speed on you know every mm -hmm. single bit. But at the same time, if we're you know at a convention or if we have people playing you know the rig for twelve hours straight, we have to make sure it's reliable. Yep. So in many ways, we're trying to make it a twenty-four hour of Le Mans computer as opposed to you know we just want right. three minutes of just tearing a lap. Endurance. Yes. Because yeah, um, I, I didn't have any notes on this in the script. Because you're going to be going to so many different places. Was there any consideration on like air purity, like beyond just the normal PC filters that we might have, like the little mesh. Mm. Like, is there something you'll be able to do? Like, if you're taking this to a warehouse in one place and then you're going to a game convention in another place, it, you know, trying to keep it running for as long as possible, that's a very different experience than, like, yeah. I've got pretty PC on my desk over there. Yeah. And I'm fine because I've got, you know, a HEPA filter you know, <laughs> in my office. Well, uh, I think what we're probably going to have to do is do what we have to do, like even with cars, like you just spray it down, we'll probably use compressed air. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, sure, it would be cool to have a bunch of advanced filtration stuff, right. but that being said is that means it's in more moving parts that we have to worry about. So like you'll see in the lot, you know, if we need to cool down a car, you'll just spray down the radiator with just some water, and gotcha. we can do little things yeah. like that. Um, I am down. Uh, I, I think a overall filtration system would might be all nice in the office. Just well, we're, we're actually going to be like we're, I'm not kidding when we're when I'm saying we're going deep into the simulator thing. 
Uh, nobody knows this yet, so we're building these two simulators, but we're also going to build a room for the simulators, and kind of a, <laughs> we're, the show that we're going to feature all of it on is called Hoonigan Players Club. And nice. it, it's and that's basically it's going to be like our little arcade. So I accept your invitation. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll yes, be there. Yes, I'll, I'll bring more Krispy Kreme. Yeah. We'll we'll hook it up. That sounds good to me. <laughs> Donuts are the way into the donut garage. Um, I think some there's space for some potential sponsorship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, some labels and stickers. You just need to get a JC sticker. Just, yeah. right. just yeah. put your face I, 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 I will get you a logo. I promise you, I will get you a logo. Right yeah, on. So, so the room that we're that these are going to live in for the most part should stay cool and be nice and, mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. So, but, but what you're saying is there, there's probably some really great aftermarket option for K&N to get into like PC building That's or something not, like that. Yeah, 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 maybe yeah, pull that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, br I brought my PC in and we joke about my Franken build because I've had the same case forever and I just keep shoving new things yeah, into it. And that's the beauty of PCs. Oh, I love it. You know, yeah. it, it does make me feel like I had a buddy who was working on a, a 56 Chevy Bel Air mm -hmm. and just like what you could rip out and put in. I was standing Standing in the engine bay as yeah. we were doing tune-ups and stuff, and you're like that's what my old PC tower feels like. Yeah. I can always just get in there and rip stuff out. It's just how you're saying about our new show, Knuckle Busters, yeah. where they take that E36 and put an LS1 in it. Cars those, are, those are car terms, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it's a BMW. German BMW American V8. Smash them together. Peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> yeah. And but but chat, look, literally, cars are just a hub for you know they're your yeah. case. And you just stuff new things into them, and they get better and better and stay fun. It, it was really embarrassing bringing it here, though, because it got shook just enough that when we went to hit power, this, like, dust bunny plume <laughs> came up from all of the oh, dust no. that was in. And you're like, I could use an air filter yeah. <laughs> on my PC case. I never even thought about people putting air filters on their, their computers. That's crazy. Well, I, I mean, like, you guys, you guys are going to have some very specialty concerns for how you're utilizing these systems. So we've got dual 1080 uh, TIs. You know, for when you guys were building this and some of the concerns that you were facing, like keeping this running, because it's kind of a gaming platform, but it sounds like you're really trying to push the simulation aspect. When all the graphics. You know, like, what, what would be like the corollary? I mean, it, is this like a dual turbo in a car or are you talking like dual engines? Well, the, tur the turbo or? in my actual car is called a GTX. So, <laughs> so, so I was actually joking that you guys got twin GTXs on this thing, but I, I'd say so. I mean, running two of them, you're just like more boost, more pixels, right? right? So um, yeah, I'd say the, the, those could definitely be turbos. Um, the hard drive is probably your ECU. The CPU is probably or I don't that know. would be like the engine. Yeah, I guess like, so. I kind of feel yeah. like that would actually be like yeah, your yeah. cylinders and stuff, especially because we were talking about cores. That's, that's the yeah. heart of it so, all. So right? what, you have like a 12-cylinder. That's a bad <laughs> daddy. That is a bad daddy. watch out. Yeah, this is, this is no joke. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm tired of looking at it. I want to use it. <laughs> no. no, so I mean, like we, we uh, you know, New Ninja Mike um, was sort of responsible for putting just like the last little finishing Shout touches to and stuff. Awesome. Mike is great yeah. for helping us build this stuff up. We still them. beat him, but yeah. Sorry, shout Mike. out to him. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry Mike. But, but even just like, he, he finished it up, he packed it up all nice for us. We brought it out here into the studio, and I had that fighting gravity moment of like, I went to go pick it up just to move it to the other side yeah. of the table, and oh. Oh, I'm gonna have to use my legs to pick this yeah, up. It's a big boy. Yeah, this is this is a, a serious piece of serious piece. I mean, of just how we were talking about, you know, my past was computers and I move into cars. It's like I remember when video cards were half of the size and the RAM was little and the hard drives mm -hmm. were like. This just blows my mind how far computers has oh yeah ha have come. But it's, but it's still identifiable. You for know, sure. That, that's what I love about, uh, so we were talking before the show, like I'm nervous to work on my little Nissan sedan because things have changed. Yeah. Things look different than they used to when I started trying to fix up old little busted Honda four cylinders and stuff like that. Yeah. But PC parts, while these things look different, I mean, it's still very much like identifiable. This piece is going to do this, that yeah, part's no, going to do that. I was surprised how well I was able to, you know, <laughs> all right, all right, it's still about the same. Yep, cool. that's, yeah, it still feels And you good. did it all without releasing the magic smoke, which is great. Yeah, I'm um, really proud of myself for not breaking anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He saved me. This guy. Yeah, he saved me. So we've got a, we've got a Toshiba hard drive, Samsung SSD. Uh, the very pop, it's hard to see behind the, uh, the Be Quiet cooler, but uh, G-Skill Trident Z RGB RAM. Uh, yes. So that, that we have the a, a special like price lighting. On. Yeah, integrated into the RAM yeah, is yeah. insane. That blew my mind too. 
Well, the, and that it, it should all play nice too. Yeah. That that's what makes me happy is like, it's not only plug and play. Like, oh, light it lights up when I plug it in, but then oh, it'll communicate with my keyboard yeah. and my Philips Hughes lighting so, in the ceiling and stuff. So it's wild. pretty silly and so wild. Well. Like you were talking about earlier, even with cars and with PCs, it's like sometimes you just want a PC that runs, you have your beige box sleepers. Totally. And other times you're like, you want to go full Twerk style and be wow. like, yo, let's get some underglow, let's get some stickers, let's well, make this look good. Let's what do you guys think? Like during the World Cup, Volkswagen was advertising RGB lighting in Jettas. Oh, wow, I didn't like, see that. Like 10 color ambient lighting in consumer, just like, you know. Production vehicles. Production with, vehicles, with yeah. Wow. I was like, that's that's a big change. I mean that's a that's a that's a fair market to go after, honestly. Right? That's that's yeah, that's their market. So But but it feels like it, that, that idea is finally crested over. Like that's not just something that like a car modder or like a PC modder does like that's now just like a standard part yeah. of well now it's complete. W without this Fantex underglow RGB <laughs> lighting strip at the bottom <laughs> of the case, my PC would not be complete. Wait <laughs> and a now second, it's finished. I almost forgot. <laughs> well, Pretty we good. all know all the underglow and the stickers make it so much faster. Right. So Scientific fact. It's the photons. Yeah. Well, these are 10 right. horsepower each. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, oh, yeah, and you've got a, some great speed holes. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. on the side. <laughs> side there. So that's, that's exactly what you need. No. So uh, can we have uh, Bad Daddy Brady put a spoiler on this baby? Uh, we can make I that think, happen. I think you need to. Yeah, we can make that happen. And I need to see the video of him, like, spot welding that. <laughs> Onto oh, this case. You don't want to see that video. No. Sorry, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that covers most of the PC build here. Um, so what can you tell us about what comes next for this system? Finally putting it all together. We've got two of these uh, simulators ready to go. What, what are you actually running in there? Like, are you using monitors or TVs or? Yeah, so we have three 50-inch Samsung TVs okay. um, that are going to be, you know, as close as we can get them into the simulator. And then the the side TVs are going to simulate because you the peripheral yeah. yeah you look out your windows it, they I saw the test fit before I came here, and it's mind blowing I'm genuinely blown away right uh, what our fabricators have done so I can't wait for, I I can't wait for you guys to see it so you really need to watch Hoonigan Players Club when it <laughs> when it comes out because it's seriously it's going to be awesome, um, but uh, yeah that's we're going to put the the machines in those and then. We'll probably run a, a few series of games like Assetto Corsa, Forza, nice. Dirt, you know, just to, just to have a nice wide range of everything and, mm -hmm. and have fun with them. Yeah. So, so was the plan always to go with the sort of wraparound monitor experience, or did you guys talk at all about maybe trying to do something with VR? Um, we thought about VR, but at the same time, it's one of the things that I think that's nice about a three-screen setup is you have that sense of distance, and it's also a lot easier for other people to follow along. Yeah. And it's, so we, we don't do a lot of solo gaming. Otherwise, right. VR would definitely be the answer. Because it's harder to share. Yeah, yeah, you know, but since we are such a big group and we want to take these things to for event activation, you just leave it open. Three TVs yeah. looks awesome. I mean, anytime you walk up, if, if you see a, a race seat with a steering wheel, a pedal <laughs> box, and then just a VR, Headset sitting there, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, I can play by myself. But if you see three screens, a full roll cage, right. uh, sick computer in the back of it, wheels, brakes, coilovers, and then also people can't talk smack with it, a VR headset yeah, right, when you right. when you hit the wall. Exactly, <laughs> you gotta say it in my face. If I suck, say it in my face, right? But uh, it, it's just such a uh, bigger experience for not just the person playing, but the surrounding. Everyone else, yeah. Too. So that's. That's why we want So that after this, this experience, after this build, and looking at Simulator 2.0, what are your thoughts on some of these similarities, some of these things we've been talking about, the you know, auto modding and PC building? Because like, you know, we were talking before the show, I really feel like, especially guys my age, a lot of us came from working on cars to becoming PC modders, mm -hmm. but there does seem to be a little bit more of a bifurcation, like a split between those communities where that fandom has sort of evolved on their own sort of chains. Yeah. I mean, it's just the, the basic evolution of, of loving to customize things. Yeah. That's, that's what it boils down to. So um, you have a car or a computer, whatever year that you're in, you're using it, you're having fun. A couple years later, there's something that'll make it better. Right. So it's like whether it's a new video card or a new turbo, or a new power supply, or or you know whatever modification you can think of to make your vehicle better, it's hard to not do it. Right. So so I mean I think that's the biggest thing that brings both of those communities together is if you just love the thrill 
of making things better, making them perform better. And I don't know anyone who likes cars or racing that doesn't really like playing video games. Right. You know, so it's yeah, kind of they all like just a, they all just they give you that go fix. together. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it's simulators and computers and loving racing, but not wanting to spend a thousand dollars a weekend to go racing. Yeah. That'll get your fix, you know. <laughs> I've, I've definitely. That's uh, two weekends of racing right there. I'm kind of proud and not Seriously? proud to say it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Seriously. Ra racing gets expensive sometimes. You got to buy tires. You got to buy fuel. Well, the way that you drive, you have to buy tires <laughs> like four sets for a weekend. You know, you know how it goes. Well, yeah. there's there's been a lot of tech happening too. We've had some conversations with other people about like GPUs. Like Nvidia has has had a whole program trying to light up uh, AI initiatives and self-driving cars, that kind of technology. Have you guys messed around with anything like that? I, I know that wouldn't necessarily be your wheelhouse—a car yeah. that drives you yeah. versus um, the other way I, around. I know that's a thing that's coming up is self-driving cars, but personally, I like. Like being behind the wheel, mm -hmm. so I'm not going to promote. <laughs> I'm not going to promote. Yeah, I'm not going to promote some computers. You know, doing it. electric is one thing. Right. Electric cars are one thing. That's just where the world is going. Totally. You know, and they can still be fast, but I want to drive it. I, I mean, like, I still know. don't know that I've ever replicated that initial pull to the back of my seat from a Tesla Roadster. They're that's scary. insane. Yeah, I didn't. I haven't even ridden in one of the the. Crazy X I models, even, the, the ludicrous yeah. mode or whatever. Yeah, they're calling it. yeah, I haven't experienced that. I've experienced the base, and I was like, "This is insane. <laughs> this is just like a you get punched in the face." Again, but, my four cylinder with a CVT. This is too much car. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I've been in some fast cars, but nothing, nothing that punched me like that Tesla. So it's electric cars are crazy, but I don't want to see the world turn into a bunch of cars driving themselves around racetracks. Well, I, I wonder, fun in that, so. I wonder if it'll become like, so, so like, you know, we don't, we don't ride horses, mm -hmm. but there's still a community of people who are horse enthusiasts. I like people riding horses in Compton all the time. Well, in, in like, <laughs> in Burbank, true. there's like a trail too, yeah, like you actually true. have to like watch, because yeah, like I might, crazy. I might hit Sorry a horse. Um, no, 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 that's fine. I, th that, um, I, I, like, if I could cut you know, like 80% of my attention from stop and go traffic on the 101 to the five, that necessarily wouldn't be bad. Yeah. And then I could just go and take my car someplace fun. And, and like, then my actual auto attention is, I can just go have fun. Right. And, and I wonder if we can find some happy balance where the enthusiasts are still satisfied. You know, like if, if, if we can dedicate spaces, if we can dedicate like, you know, an abandoned airstrip and we can turn that into like a park for just for like, some hoonigan yeah, action, yeah. something like that, yeah. we wouldn't lose that. Just like we have horseback trails or something right. like that. Yeah. But I'm, I don't have quality time behind the wheel of the car when I'm stuck on the 405. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> that's, that's the worst kind of wheel time <laughs> is the traffic right. time. Um, we'd obviously love to see more and more car parks yeah. expand. You know, um, There are a couple here and there, but they're usually pretty far out just because building anything like that... Uh, and in uh, the city is it's a lot a, of space. Yeah, to dedicate, yeah, yeah. It's a tough thing, but that's that's why I love the donut garage in our lot so much because we can just step outside of the office and burn off a little stress or anything. You know, right on. it's it's so nice just being able to go do some donuts. You know, <laughs> if you need if you need to if you need to blow some stress off or something. So oh, and because like I've seen the videos where it looks like you've created like a crazy five alarm fire from like yeah. tires going up in yeah. smoke. From a distance on a drone aerial it's, shot. It is wild the way that smoke funnels in there, but it's just fun, man. <laughs> I can't explain what it does for your heart. You gotta, you gotta burn some tires. Right on. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us here today. This, I mean, because I know I've, I've been hearing and I've been watching the chatter from uh, all of the New Egg Ninjas. Like, we've been having a blast trying to get you know some some help in here getting you guys set up on this so i'm really excited to see these parts coming together um i i know your audience and our audience they're all probably looking forward to the finished product again a nice meeting of different enthusiast cultures uh was there anything else you guys wanted to say uh about the project before you take off it's it's the hoonigan youtube channel it's where we're going to be yeah, following just, what's going on just as i said before you're not going to want to miss the final result of where these computers are going to live the simulator build it's going to be insane. Danger Dan and Josh Mason kill the fabrication on it, as always. Um, it's just going to be awesome. So YouTube.com slash The Hoonigans for the four-part series called Hoonigan Players Club, which will involve all of that stuff. And then <laughs> just follow us on our social media, and you'll, you'll see all the goodness. You'll get to so. see Hurt wrenching. No. 
That <laughs> Again, I don't know that we even have time to explain that. No, it's fine. Just watch, just watch just, the just YouTube watch. video. You'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. So, um, uh, thank you so much for dropping by, guys. We actually do have, we can throw to a teaser of the video coming up. So we have a, a little to show you guys. Uh, so we can throw to that. And uh, yeah, let's check that out. All right, so we're here at the New Egg Studios today. They are going to help us build some engines for our simulator. This is fancy, man. <laughs> How are we supposed to go back to the donut garage after coming here? Well, I, no, I, we're just gonna take some notes. Uh, Mike from New Egg over here is gonna build this one. And the Hoonigans are gonna build this one, and I think we're gonna smoke the shit out. Yeah, sorry, man, you're going down. You ever seen a grown man eat a hard drive? <laughs> <laughs> First time for everything. Who said it's the first time? Remember, if you want to pick up the parts you need for your own system, go to newegg.com slash newegg now and click on the Hoonigan banner and you can check out some of the stuff we've been working on. And while you're there, you'll see that right on the top of the Newegg Now page today, we have deals on two of Intel's 905P Optane SSDs. Two very different form factors and sizes with savings and gift cards available if you buy today using that promo code. We talked about these drives before with Intel when they first released a few months back and we got some fantastic insight into what makes Optane technology so special. So let's take a look back at that discussion right now. We can throw it to that. Interview. Here to tell us all about what the newest Optane drive can do for you, we have Ace Stryker from Intel. Welcome, Ace. Thank you. Thanks. I'm psyched to be here. This is where the magic happens. So it's it a is. <laughs> True story. Sometimes. So to start things off, what do you do with Intel? Uh, I'm a solution architect at Intel, mm -hmm. and I, I work uh, specifically in the storage and memory group within Intel. So I work with customers and end users, uh, focusing on the Optane products to help them determine, uh, hey, what are the right products and configurations to make the most of this new technology, uh, you know, help them to want to evaluate it and, and really, uh, uh, you know, find the value of the new technology. Nice. Okay, so we've, we've talked to Optane before on the show, but just as a, as a primer, get people sort of up to speed, someone who might not be familiar with Optane, what is it, what does it do, mm -hmm. and what's special about an Optane SSD versus just a normal solid state drive? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's, it's a new technology, and the fundamental difference is the memory media that's inside of it. Mm -hmm. So if you look at uh, most SSDs on the market today, and this has been the way for a while now, uh, it uses NAND media inside. And that's also true of a lot of the SSDs that, that Intel makes, by the way. We have NAND SSDs as well. Uh, but Optane uses a new memory media inside the SSD called 3D Crosspoint. Mm -hmm. uh, the physics of that are different, and there's a couple advantages to it. Um, it's it's uh, what we call bit addressable. If you're you know writing things and, uh, and moving things around in NAND, you typically have to do it in big blocks of data, okay. and there's management around that, and and there's sort of a, a performance uh, cost to doing that. Uh, since you're working on the bit level with Optane, you can you can get better performance out of that, and that really shows up in a couple of ways. Um, uh, super low latency is is one way where Optane's really strong relative to NAND. Uh, also, random read write performance is really really good. And particularly at, at low Q depths, uh, right. which is where we, we see most of the real world workloads. Uh, so Optane really is kind of engineered to shine 
in those areas where folks are actually you know, working and playing and using their storage. Nice. So how would you describe the difference between Optane memory and Optane storage? Uh, it's a couple of different applications of the same uh, uh, 3D crosspoint media, right? So the, the SSD is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's, uh, it's a drive that you'd put in, in your system, um, uh, perhaps uh, in place of a NAND drive, or perhaps, you know, if you're looking at some of our products, you might use one as a boot drive and you might have a, a storage volume, but um, it's blazing fast storage, right? Uh, the memory module is a smaller capacity, and it's in an M.2 form factor. Mm -hmm. uh, those come in 16 and 32 gigs right now. And what those are meant to do is to be paired with uh, slower storage, uh, either hard disk drives or SATA SSDs, uh, and to, to act as a cache accelerator. So as you use it, the system actually views uh, the, the hard drive plus the memory module as one volume. Uh, but as you use it, uh, the memory module is, is sort of learning what files you're accessing most often and caching those so that uh, you get access much, much faster. And so the, the goal with that technology is sort of, you know, you can get high capacities uh, with uh, a lower sort of to total cost of ownership with, a, you know, a hard disk drive or a SATA drive plus Optane versus just a big capacity. Right. Uh, and and so one, one of the areas when we, we were talking about Optane in the past was that this was a step above just some of the other hybrid solutions that other manufacturers had come up with for, I mean, just creating a cache, mm -hmm. but this was more uh, sort of an aggressive learning algorithm as to how the computer was, or resources on the computer were being utilized. Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's got algorithms in there that are trying to understand what are, the, what are the, the things that users are doing most frequently, what are the things, where are the, the um, performance constraints uh, due to storage, right? Mm -hmm. And it's trying to sort of optimize your experience around that and to bring those things into the, and, and, and put them on the Optane drive where, you know, it, it's going to be much, much faster than, um, you know, HDD or SATA drive alone. Right on. So for people who are new to Optane technology, can you talk about the Optane SSDs that you've already released before the new model? Yeah, sure. So first on the scene was the, the memory module early uh, last year, and then we had the 900P, which has been kind of our flagship. Mm -hmm. uh, which came out toward the end of last year. Um, that, that's a, a product that um, uh, came in a couple different, still comes, not past tense, in a couple <laughs> different uh, form factors. Uh, you had a two and a half inch form factor with a 280 gig uh, capacity, and then you had the add-in card, um, this kind of guy here, uh, at a 280 or 480 gig capacity. Uh, earlier this year, we launched uh, the 800P, Mm -hmm. which is uh, the first uh, M.2 Optane drive uh, meant to be used as a, as a storage device, right, as opposed to memory modules. Mm -hmm. uh, and that comes in, in either 58 or 118 gig capacities as well. So as we kind of get the technology uh, out there in the market, you start to see a product family growing, right? And the idea is to provide uh, solutions and products that are going to work for different customers who are looking to do different things with it. And so what, what you announced, uh, what you released yesterday, what you're here to talk about today, mm -hmm. moving up to the 905P is another step in that platform, in that product family that you were describing. Um, what, what sets this apart from some of the previous uh, Optane solutions? Why, why, who, who are you targeting sure. with uh, 905? So the 905 kind of represents the next uh, step for Intel, uh, Intel with this Optane technology, right? Um, and really, we're just getting started with Optane. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a technology with a ton of potential, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, we saw some, some good uh, 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 response from the market and from the press to the 900P, uh, but we also heard a lot from our customers and from folks about what they'd like to see from Optane. One of those things was bigger capacities, right? And so the 905 offers that. Uh, the 905 comes in a, the, the two and a half inch form factor here in 480 gigs, so okay. that's about twice what the 900P offers. Mm -hmm. And then the add-in card here comes in uh, 960 gigs, so again, about twice nice. what the, the 900P in the same form factor, right? Uh, and so um, that's one difference. Another one is um, we're using, uh, 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 the technology is maturing, right? Mm -hmm. And so what you see in the 905P is, is a, uh, a media that's higher performance inside, and we've been able to get uh, a little more performance out of that, do some firmware tweaks. Nice. Uh, and so you'll see, if you look at the specs in terms of reads and writes, you know, mm -hmm. you'll see an improvement over the 900P there as well. Uh, operating temperature is higher now. Instead of 0 to 70 on the 900P, it's 0 to 85. So if you've got an environment where you need extended temp, that's an option for you as well. 
So uh, just uh, again, how this might differ from traditional solid state drives. There's, there's a general notion that if you double the capacity of an SSD, if you double the capacity of NAND, that you see that performance bump because of how those things mm -hmm. uh, work in parallel. Is there a similar equivalent, like moving up to these larger storage uh, capacities? Is this why we're seeing the advantage, or is 3D Crosspoint different in how the technology is utilized? So now we're just seeing process advantages over capacity advantages. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a good question. And uh, one of the unique things about Optane is that you'll see performance that's consistent across the, uh, the, the drives. For example, the, the 905P, um, you don't necessarily suffer performance penalties because you're using a smaller capacity, okay. right? You're gonna see consistency there. And it's also gonna have other differences in terms of how it performs over time. Mm -hmm. um, it, the endurance on these things is, is you know, crazy high. That's one of the things we're really proud of. Uh, so if you've got workloads where that um, is a requirement, then these ought to be you know, uh, very interesting. Um, but you know, sort of independent of uh, 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 the age of the drive or how full the drive is or what the capacity is, you're gonna get like, consistent great performance. Uh, from Optane regardless. Nice. Um, so you were mentioning the various form factors before. Which form factor has been more popular with the previous drives? And do you have a reason why you think that might be? It's a good question. Um, I don't know categorically <laughs> okay. uh, if there's a standout in terms of what's been popular. I mean, if you look at what's existed, uh, with the 900P, you had, if you wanted a two and a half inch, you had 280 gigs, mm -hmm. right? If you wanted to go bigger, you had to go to the add-in card. Um, and so that may have affected some, some folks' purchasing decisions. If you wanted the M.2, uh, you know, you have the 800P, right? And so to an extent, um, you know, your capacity will drive your form factor decision, sure. right? Um, or vice versa. Uh, what, the, what the 905P does now is it enables higher capacities, gives folks more flexibility in terms of what's actually gonna work in their configurations and what they wanna choose with a, a wider variety of capacities and form factors to choose from. Now, when we were talking about the 900P on the show previously, we spent a ton of time talking about what that drive offered PC gamers. Um, mm -hmm. So from a slightly different perspective, what makes the 905P appealing for more workstation-focused builds? Yeah, sure, and certainly um, the drive, you know, it's, it's got advantages for gamers as well, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we can talk about those. But um, on the workstation side, that was where we heard a lot uh, uh, from our customers about capacity and about, hey, we love the performance that we're getting from Optane drives. Mm -hmm. We love the low latency, especially if we've got you know, mixed workloads, yeah. if we're doing a lot of random read writes, if we're doing a lot of reading and writing at the same time. These are things that you see kind of in a, in a workstation a lot. Um, uh, really kind of uh, uh, positive um, reaction there and good reception. But a lot of those systems require a lot of storage as yeah. well, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, the 960 gigabyte add-in card is really, uh, you know, that, that fills that gap that existed in the product line before. I mean, it's, it's funny, we're in a market, like, we're talking about terabyte capacities as if, like, NVD. Right, yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah. like, a yeah. couple of years ago, like... DGAF is a new one I heard we, we had a little chat pre-show talking little, about some of our favorite little inside jokes. Uh, PG uh, ways to swear. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so we're talking about new technologies, a new process, different uh, optimization or different focus for what we can accomplish with storage. This has to color the conversation from Intel's perspective on things like benchmarks. When we were talking about 900P, there seemed to be a, a, a different focus for how to rate the performance mm -hmm. on these products mm -hmm. versus how we've traditionally talked about storage in the past. Um, how does the 905P differ in those areas or how does it exceed or um, uh, improve upon the way that we've, we've looked at storage performance in the past? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. And I think anytime you've got um, a disruptive technology, whether we're talking about computer storage or, or anything else, you know, how well, you, this is changing the conversation yeah. from like when we had spinning disks to when we went to NAND. Yeah, exactly. And, and so we, we, we completely changed like benchmarking. Benchmarking had to follow that evolution to now. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing from Intel's perspective. I mean, you guys have to be looking at this stuff internally and saying like we have a, a focus here and old, you know, you can run it at home benchmark suites right. aren't necessarily going to reflect what it is that we're trying to accomplish. Yeah, exactly. And some of our favorite kind of press quotes uh, that have you know, uh, come out that, you know, when we have these outlets that are 
benchmarking these drives and reviewing them. You know, there was one, and I, I forget the outlet, uh, but... Uh, oh, but name them, come on. It's taken, yeah. taken all the fun out of benchmarking an SSD. No. It was essentially <laughs> put when they were testing one of our drives. Uh, because, you know, the, the, the latency is so low and the performance right. is so high that um, it's, it's difficult to characterize with conventional benchmarks. And so uh, a big focus uh, on Intel's part, and then part of my job, is to uh, help folks understand how these things perform with real-world workloads, because that's mm -hmm. where this is designed, right? It's yeah. designed, uh, and, and if you run a benchmark, you may not you know, be getting the right look at a low Q depth, where we know like 80% of, of you know, real world workloads happen, or right. uh, things like that. Uh, and so you know, my job is to uh, find software partners to help us tell that story, right? And to evaluate and say, hey, actually put this in a system uh, where you're doing work, uh, and tell us what kind of difference you're getting. Tell us. Uh, either where uh, um, you know you were sitting around waiting for things to load or tasks to complete before, and you're not anymore. Mm -hmm. You know things like that. And so we've had a couple great uh, uh, partners recently that have helped us evaluate some of our newer hardware. Uh, if we're talking about the the workstation kind of environment, um, SideFX is is one partner that um, uh, they make a, a program called Houdini it's for rendering effects, and it's big in the entertainment industry and increasingly in gaming as well. Uh, so uh, that's an example where. Uh, they render these scenes that have just really, really intensive, right? There's mm -hmm. a, the, the test they ran with us, one of them, was a seven-second kind of rendering of like a, a, a maelstrom or a whirlpool kind of thing in the ocean with like a billion-plus particles <laughs> in it. Right. Wow. To render that sucker on a top-performing man drive took 17 hours mm -hmm. for a seven-second video clip. And with Optane, that was a, it was six hours. So you okay. see quite a... Quite a big difference. Yeah. Oh, but um, I saw on the benchmark there was only like a two percent difference in extended Q depth <laughs> performance. So, that's why. That's why. So we, NBD. That's why we hope folks will look beyond the benchmark. I mean, <laughs> benchmarks are useful to an extent, and especially if you pick ones that are good at simulating real what life What you're workloads. working on. Yeah. Yeah. So SpecWPC is one that's big uh, if you're kind of evaluating workstations, and we've done a lot of testing there. They kind of simulate workloads that are aligned with different um, uh, segments. So they'll do like a a life sciences workload and an entertainment and media workload. And there we see, you know, 3x, 4x improvement. Uh, but it also seems that, like, a part of this conversation, especially from when we were talking about 900p, is that the full benefit of this can't be realized until you've spent a little time working on it to kind of get Optane primed for your workload specifically. Like, you give this to me for a week as a reviewer, and I plug it into a system, and I run a bunch of synths, and then say, oh, I did this, this, and this, and this. Like, I haven't even scratched the surface of what Optane has learned about my work behavior. Yeah, yeah, and what you're describing is really exactly why I have a job at Intel. <laughs> uh, well, we knew we called the right guy to come so, and talk about this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you swap out a NAND drive for an Optane drive today, just one for the other, you're going to see an, a performance improvement, right? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a very high-performing drive. It's great. Uh, but uh, the, the nature of hardware innovation is such that software innovation has also happened to fully kind of enable the power of the hardware, right? And so a lot of the applications uh, that you might run today uh, are written with kind of uh, memory management that accounts for older, slower yeah. storage, right? And so one of my parts of my job is to go out, work with some of these, these software vendors, these developers, and say, hey, how can we actually optimize the way the software is written uh, to, to kind of fully unlock the potential here? And to take the kind of the, the benefit you'd get from just a swap, and, and really like kind of tune it to right. to make the most of the new hardware and kind of enable for you know what we consider to be kind of the the computing architecture of the future. Right now, earlier we had mentioned when we were talking, uh, you know, we said the 905P is great for workstation builds, whereas the 900P was great. We talked about that the benefits of that for gaming builds, and you said, well, it's great for gaming builds too. But let's get to that later. Let's make now that later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so tell me how gamers and enthusiasts can also benefit from the 905P. Sure. Well, uh, one one is uh, the blinky lights here, right? That's something that yeah, we it's like <laughs> the most important part. <laughs> Like, we're going to have this not, all over the show. I hesitate to say it's the most important uh, thing that we've done with the 905P, but it is something that we, <laughs> we, we heard from customers that they'd like to see, right? Okay. And so I've got this cycling on a fun kind of, you can, you can pick from the three colors. This is, this is um, just something we cooked up for fun um, to kind of show off what that looks like. Um, but um, 
you know, the performance improvements over the other Optane products and, and frankly over the NAND products, those are going to matter to gamers as well. Mm -hmm. The capacity matters, you know, if you've got mm -hmm. a huge Steam library right. and, and your, your habit is to have a lot of games stored locally, you're going to want all of those on fast storage, right? Um, and so, yeah, absolutely, you know, we think this is a, a great um, uh, product for gamers as well. Uh, and you know, since the the launch yesterday, you know, couple couple reviews are starting to come out. Couple sort of press items, really really favorable uh, response to this. Uh, do you guys want me to name it? Let's hear. Or is that uh, yeah, you can? Okay, so okay. so Tom's Hardware, right? Their their yeah. full review, I think, is still forthcoming. But their write up yesterday, based on their preliminary testing, called it the fastest SSD ever. And I think, don't quote me on this, but I think that the actual term, uh, uh, words they used were by a wide margin. And you, you can you know nice. encourage folks to go look at that and see. Um, and you know that's going to matter for gamers as well, right? And that, that includes some of the more recent kind of offerings uh, by competitors as well. Right. Uh, so yeah, I mean I, that kind of stuff. Whether you're you're playing on it or working on it, it's it's going to kind of uh, make make life more fun for anybody. Take right? a step up. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. So it's doing well. You would say. <laughs> this is, we're excited, and we're just getting started <laughs> with Optane. You know, like these products we're super psyched about, right. uh, and there's a lot of value in these. Um, but you know. As we go out there and you know, we learn more about the technology and, and uh, we get more uh, sophisticated and capable uh, in our technology and our manufacturing, mm -hmm. I mean, you can expect to see a lot from Intel uh, you know, to come on the Optane front because it's just, uh, this thing's got, got huge potential. Awesome. Well, nice. Ace, thank you so much for stopping by and telling us all about the 905P. You're welcome back anytime. Thank you. It's been great to be here. I appreciate it. All right, thanks again to Ace Stryker from Intel for joining us to tell us everything we need to know about Intel's 905P Optane Drives. Probably the coolest name of anybody in tech who we've ever interviewed on our show, Ace Stryker, which is uh, pretty rad. So today only via Newegg Now, you can get the 480 gigabyte 2.5 inch PCIe drive for $30 off the normal price, plus you'll get a $50 Newegg gift card you can use later, or you can pick up the big daddy the 960 gigabyte half height PCIe drive that'll run you $1,269.99 after Newegg Now Savings. You'll also get a $50 Newegg gift card and you'll have to worry about, you'll never have to worry about slow storage ever again. Seriously, it's pretty great. All right, we've talked about deals, we've talked about hardware, it's time to game. And I'm going to be joined by a special guest and we're going to play some Mugsters. So uh, why don't we check out that trailer while we get all set up? Peggy 12. Prepare for takeoff. T minus three seconds. Two. Engage ignition. One. Here we go. Here we go. So that looks like fun. Mugsters just came out this past Tuesday. We have it on the PS4, and I'm uh, gonna take it a spin, take it for a spin with my pal Mike, part of the Newegg Plays uh, streaming team. Thanks so, for having me, man. Welcome to the show. Yeah. We we got to do the guest appearance on. Uh, you did it. On I, your uh, stream. I think a month or so ago. About a month ago. I think we're due for for a return. Absolutely. And we're actually gonna have you next week. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, so I like this a little bit of. Uh, New egg synergy. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, it's it's all synergy time. right now. <laughs> so uh, before we get started here with Mugsters, uh, why don't you tell the audience uh, what you do on New Egg Plays and uh, when and where can people spy on your game playing? Oh jeez, uh, you not your home stuff. Don't do no, that. Don't make it weird. Don't worry. Yeah. In the show, you can't find any more people of scum and villainy. 
that Newick plays. It's uh, a hive. It's a hive. It's uh, no, uh, Newick plays, uh, we basically play all sorts of games, uh, you know, from PUBG to single player games, like in D Detroit, we had a lot of fun with that as well. Nice. Um, we're, uh, we like to describe ourselves as the always sunny crew of Newegg. Okay. We're always arguing with each other, uh, yelling. It's and it's all it's all chaos. Lots it's of shenanigans. All chaos. And yeah, a lot of shenanigans schemes too. Schemes and plots. We like to screw each other uh, over. It's weird. Well, in the video game sense, that's a different show. So, um, <laughs> so <laughs> you'd like to think so. Why don't, why don't we go ahead and jump in? We'll see. Oh, we're not going to do this one, are we? Yes! Oh, yes! you're messing me up. Come okay. on. You, so you're going to love this. This is, uh, is a new indie game from uh, developer Reinkaut. Uh, I, I don't know if I even have that uh, pronounced correctly. But this is a developer from Finland, published by Team17, the studio that also published Overco Overcooked and Ukulele. Oh, no wonder it's uh, <laughs> this level was a little difficult. Overcooked, we kicked our butts. Nah, Overcooked is, is great, like, family throwdown game. Help! Sorry. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Got a little scared there. Wow, he's fast. So we played this game once, just to test it out. Yeah, all, all we did was get like the controller set up. We got wrecked. What? Okay, I, got, I got your back, don't worry about it. Uh, I got it. So him. I, I am the him. guy on the... the you're you're, you're oh, jumping into the wall. Right? Yeah, I'm on the very I, I did the switch. So uh, this is a physics-based action puzzler. You know, that's what's kind of fun about this, like, this current stage of, of gaming. You can have all of these different like, adjectives describing your game before you actually get to like, what the game is. What do you have? Do you have an uh, it's a, RPG it's a or do you have a JRPG? Well, it's not just an action puzzler. It's yeah. a physics-based co-op, dual-player, action, top-down, isometric, uh, bomb-throwing, uh, puzzle I'm getting lightheaded. Game. Stop. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's like, you, you actually get to say, like, this is, oh, oh we're going to throw the, throw oh, the bomb you at you. Oh, you want to together? No, I want to get the teamwork. I'm going to get the teamwork. Oh, there we go. Oh. Ah. You want to take the car this time? Uh, you, you take the car. I'm, oh. I say we keep it, and he's following you. It's just not fair. It's almost like a, like a baby bird. It's all the first thing. That's the mother. So we're battling aliens. We also have to rescue humans. I almost got run over by my partner there. Well, you know, trees are the worst. The car driving physics look, look. Uh, I don't know, do kids still say hella? Like, can you say they look hella hard? Well, I mean. Because we always, just had the Hoonigans on, and you're drifting like crazy. You can always swing back to old school, you know, uh, words and just go, you know, that's ballin'. Old, old school words? Yeah. That, well, I thought hella was. I didn't know that hella <laughs> was new school. I don't know where. Where are you going? <laughs> I don't, well, because we didn't finish this map. I, I didn't get to explore everything. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, like, Thanks I'd, like, I'd kind of like to see after the um, after the Hoonigans were on talking about like their simulator, how well the car physics. All right, you want to get in the car? You want to do some car oh, physics? Oh wait, no, this 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 one I remember now. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here to the switch. You drive. Doop doop do and jump. And oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah, you got that switch going. There on. we go. Now we're cooking with napalm. Later on. Bye. Okay, so we have to fight aliens and rescue humans. Um, we've played this game enough to basically kill all the humans that we tried to rescue. And then I crashed the plane that is our escape vehicle into the sea. Yeah, you did it actually. I did. I did do that. Yeah. You beat the dragon. Oh. Oh! Did he die? Did he die? Or did he get like? Is he now one with the other human? Oh, that's a very good question that I don't know. Because, <laughs> you know, that's just like the real physics of rescuing someone from a weird cryo chamber is they would just instantly get merged with the other rescue JC, person. JC, let me ask you a question. Have you been cry uh, cryo-frozen? I have not. No? Well, I, it's definitely I, I don't think you can I've speak to the expertise of this thing. I know. I, I appreciate that, but I can speculate. <laughs> you know, if, if cable news has taught me anything, it's that <laughs> my opinion is just as valid as any expert's. You are right. not wrong. Right, let's see. Oh! Did I just, did, did I jump out? You got, there's no gas. You gotta put some gas in there. No, I don't think that's it. Bye! Oh, you went with me. Watch me do a barrel roll. They were just talking about that. Do a barrel roll! Did we Yay! just pass? Yay! We, we did, did it! it? <laughs> wow! So we, you can go in either solo or co-op. I think, 
I don't know that this game would necessarily be as much fun solo. No, I don't think so either. This is a, uh, you need another friend to troll you a little bit to maybe it'll be a little fun, but uh, <laughs> well, so add to the chaos. This, this is hilarious because like when we were doing um, the, the yarn game, the yeah. co-op game yeah, yeah. with Trisha, she is such a, like a, a helpful, encouraging, and give so I mean, like we just had this blast. And you were like the exact opposite. No, no, it was just like, oh yeah, we're really working together on this. You sat down in the chair to play to play this for like thirty seconds, and we're instantly talking crap. <laughs> and you know, like, welcome to New York Plays, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're nobody's friends. <laughs> we're <laughs> it was a it was a stark difference to my uh, my normal are, on camera. Are these gaming. all the rescue people? Is this what? No, I think this is just like Rescue. we have to shoot them off into uh, oh. to those tunnels or portals or okay. something. I don't think there are any people in there. How about this? You get the yellow car, I'll get the red car. I don't want to drive a car, though. They we'll drag cars. race. Can Hoogans was just see? in here. Come on. <laughs> no, I want to see. Hold on. I, you, okay, you, you go. But I want to see what's going on in here because I think I need to hit. I did it. Let's see. I'm going to hit this switch. You're going to go to level Complete one? Main objective. Human saved. Crystals collected. I think we so should we, go. No, we just did three. We should go hard or go home. Okay, let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. More's, more, more difficult. <laughs> so, so I learned from the last time you were on New York Plays uh, that you are, uh, you have a uh, a fine taste of the classics in terms of games. I, I enjoy some classic gaming. Like I a, mean, some Street Fighter. Oh yeah. Well, I, mean, it's, I, I still think it's probably one of the most accessible couch co-op games ever made. Like, if you, right, if you right. throw anyone... Oh! Uh-oh. Uh, wow, okay. So now we're proper stuck oh, over... Back. Oh, it's okay, back. okay. Right, that that okay. makes me feel better. Yeah. Like, I just felt like I, you know, I make poor life decisions anyway, but <laughs> the game was really going to make point out some of my mistakes. Um, I've been holding no, to this barrel for a long I, time. I think, like, even with my parents, I could throw my mom... A, a controller and uh, Street Fighter 2. Yeah. And we could have fun. Like, we could have a good time. What? With you, that game. you could game with your parents? Totally. Oh, man. Oh, so, so like, this is where I got really lucky. So, uh, yeah, I was born 1980. Yeah. But my folks are scientists and engineers who grew up in Ooh, old school arcades. They love that technology. So, my mom is all about, like, like Tempest yeah. and uh, uh, Tetris, you know, like, real Twitch style, like, old puzzle games and stuff. My mom likes Minesweeper. That's fine too. <laughs> you know, all, all, gaming is all types of individuals who do things. But See, that's... So, the, so when you just told me right now that you were really into uh, Street Fighter, I was the Mortal Kombat kid. You know yeah. what you said? You were, breaking up, you were broken up into two groups? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That or Tekken? Yeah. That, so, you know, and Tekken was way not on my radar. What is this? I don't know. I kind of feel like. I, I should be able to damage them in some way, but we hit the switch. We can go through that gate, but I'm not sure. I think what we need to do is drive that bus up that ramp. Oh, nice. Like speed. So, exactly. Or speed too. Or the, boat. the name of the movie, I believe, is the bus that couldn't slow down. <laughs> nice. We had to keep the speed above 50 miles an hour. What's, what's reverse? We, this might not be what we need to oh, do. Oh, no, that was the front of the bus. Hold on, I just gotta get rid of this guy. Oh, never mind. Oh no, back up. Let's see. Can, let's see if like cars actually are an advantage to running over aliens. Not drifting so uh, sick World now, are you? Where, uh, where the folly of the uh, aliens was germs. Yeah. Yeah. War my, of the world. Ver my version will be buses. Oh no! How can we defeat this species of people who all have buses? It's kind of like um. The metro. Oh, we can't make the bus make the leap. That's too bad. That's fine. That's fine. Because like I can understand, you know, from a sort of a an H.G. Wells era of writer that that would have been a novel concept of having like aliens that didn't understand germ theory. <laughs> they could cross interstellar distances, but don't get you know like washing your hands after you go to no, the bathroom. They, they've uh, evolved past that. They don't have to wash their hands anymore. But um, they're always clean. The, the one that really bothered me was uh, um, uh, signs. Oh right, how yeah. water? Really? Yeah. So you're you come, an alien species, and you're like, Meh, I'll drop on so, this planet that's 80% water. And and uh, harass being, we would be like the H.G. Geiger aliens. Yeah. To those, because we spit acid. We would. Yeah. 
Are you gonna make that? Oh my god, oh! you did! Look at that! Oh! oh. oh. You did it! Oh, I'm carrying a barrel. So, so yeah, that, that always bothered me. Turn off that water rune and drop. Let's see. Woo! Okay, let's see if I, I have an idea. That didn't work. It, push, it pushes you out. See it, see, it moves you along because this is a physics based hey, puzzling uh, game. Jesse, can you hold this? Thanks. Ah! Thank you. Ah! That was rude. Well, you know. But also very much in keeping with physics. Exactly. Are you going to make that jump again? Oh, Nailed it. Skill. Nailed it. Did a kickflip on the way down. <laughs> don't forget, you can hold uh, R2 to run. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know. That's how I made the jump. I just don't feel like running all the time. I don't know like why everyone's always in a rush. You got to go fast. I mean, you do, I guess. Hop in, Nate. What? But don't we have to do more stuff? Or are we just gonna, we just gonna we have an idea. I have blow an idea. this pop stand? We're gonna do this. I don't, I don't think this is where we need to go. I think now you stalled out. Now I think we're gonna crash. Hold on. I did it. I, okay. We didn't destroy the field of cyclones. I don't we think didn't we can save. Do the next island. It's locked. We didn't, we didn't save any humans, and we collected no crystals. Other than that, we totally rocked that level. Man, oh. we are so good at games. Other than doing nothing, we nailed it. Whoa, that didn't happen last time. Ah. Uh, uh, help. Where'd, where'd you go? Where'd you help. go? Help! I'm coming! Help! Oh, and God! I'm dead. I tried to help you, and I'm dead. Well, All right, why don't you keep doing this, sure. and I'm going I'm to wrap controllers. up the... See, I got this. See if you can also play with your feet. And uh, I'm going to turn back, and we're, we're going to wrap this up while Mike... I don't know. Let's see if he does better without me. Oh, I so, got this. Um, I'm getting the sign that it's time to bring the show in for a landing, like we couldn't do with the airplane. Um, Mike, real quick, while you're trying to figure it out, what, what do you think so far? What's your verdict on Mugsters? Oh, man, this is good chaotic fun. Uh, it's good chaotic fun. I, I think uh, grab a couple of buddies uh, and start swinging away at aliens. All right, let, let, me, let me put you on the spot for some criticism. All right. Not digging the music. Yeah, I think it's very... The music is, is a little I get what they're simplistic. trying to do. I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to do like almost like a, a horror film. Yes. You know, like just sort of like the Aliens ambience. are here and yeah, stuff's like, spooky. Oh, no, right? but it's... It's very. I really feel it would benefit from more Benny Hill. Ooh. Oh, can't we do that? Because that's probably copyright. So this so. is something we like to yell at our show. Clip that. Someone clip that, please. <laughs> well, thank you for joining me. Yeah, really appreciate it, sir. This was fun. And I, I will be back on New Egg Play soon. So uh, I'm looking forward to that, too. Yeah. Where, 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 where do you stream that? Is that on uh, the... Uh... Check us every Wednesday and Friday uh, at 2.30 Pacific time on Mixer and Twitch. And that's uh, twitch.tv slash New Egg and mixer.com slash New Egg. Right on. You should do that because I'm going to do that. So um, if you're out there watching and you like the look of this game, Monsters, you can pick it up right now on PC, PS4, Xbox One, or Nintendo Switch. It's basically everywhere. And uh, Mike's going to keep playing. I have a few more deals to wrap up because that's what we do here on the show. Newegg.com slash Newegg now. That's where you want to be to find the promo codes you need to save money. Pick up Newegg gift cards and get great tech. We have two Intel processors on that page for you right now. The i7-8700 and the ultra-powerful i9-7980XE. That's the incredible 18-core Skylake oh. X CPU. Mike's in trouble, and it's making me happy. Whether you need one of the most powerful consumer CPUs that money can buy, or something more mainstream with the 8700, you can save money and get bonus gift cards via that Newegg Now page. We also have two Corsair power supplies, the 750 watt and 850 watt models, both for $20 off the normal price, and both come with $10 Newegg gift cards. And you won't want to miss out on the Zotac Z-Box mini PCs and kits also on newegg.com slash Newegg Now. We've talked about these systems on the show before. We covered them. I went hands-on with them at CES, the beginning of the year. Zotac makes amazing, powerful PCs, small, form, uh, small footprint, small form factors, definitely worth a look. And there's so much more from unlocked cell phones to an MSI gaming laptop to an Aorus X299 gaming motherboard. Shop on newegg.com slash newegg now through the end of the day today and let us save you some money. Before we go today, apparently we actually got a video from our normal co-host, the, the, uh, the lovely and talented Trisha Hirschberger sent in from Comic-Con. Let's check that out right now. Hi, Juan. 
everyone, how's it going? Uh, I wish you could be here. Where I am here right now is San Diego Comic-Con. Well, it's the eve of San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, preview night just wrapped up, so I'm actually talking to you from the past. Hey, I'm speaking to you in the future. Um, but yeah, I got to go to a Nintendo preview event tonight where I got to play Overcooked 2. I made sushi, you're gonna love it, and some Smash Bros Ultimate, it's amazing. Uh, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And I walked past a shadow of the Tomb Raider activation, and there's so many cool things. And I just got here, so so much more to check out. And I wish you were here, and I'll try to report back as much as I can. But in the meantime, have fun doing New Egg now, and know that I miss you guys. Bye! I'm always amazed when someone gets a video out from a show floor like that. That's like impressive. your data networks are always just like yeah. crumbling. Just so how many people are on their phone right now using she's, the internet? She's just got the magic, man. She's got the magic. She's got the touch. So thank you very much, <laughs> Trisha. Uh, we'll see you back here next week. Uh, so I'll be uh, I'll be glad to have you back in the studio. I <laughs> mean, the replacement they found for you is just adequate. So um, thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks again to Hurt and Brian from Hoonigan for joining me in the studio today. And uh, uh, thanks to Mike from the New Egg Stream team. Thanks, JC. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad that you were able to drop by. Um, remember to keep an eye out on that, uh, the Hoonigan YouTube channel and right here at New Egg in the coming weeks to see the progress of their awesome driving simulator. Come on back next week. Trisha will be back in the studio and we'll be talking about decorating your dorm room just in time for back to school, sending kids off to college. As always, I want to thank the folks here at Newegg, even without my amazing co-host, still an amazing team of Newegg ninjas helping keep this show running, keeping me looking good, keeping me uh, with fun tech and fun games to uh, talk about on the show. This has been Newegg Now, and now you know. I'll catch you next week. Yeah, 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 yeah.